Welcome to Graveload. I want to talk about AMD and them going to unify the architectures for their graphics side. Now they have cDNA and rDNA, right? rDNA is their graphics side, you know, GPU, gaming, all that fun stuff. cDNA is like MI300, AI, all the servers type of stuff. And the AMD is going to call now uDNA to unify that. And while if I remember back when they split the two, I was mixed. I thought that they could help them out, maybe take the share of you know each of their competitive markets and maybe put in the effort to take on Nvidia. The longer that this happened, it seemed like AMD was just splitting resources between the two and fragmenting a lot of stuff and not being able to take on Nvidia where they need to, and that is CUDA. I know we all want gaming and better gaming cards, but CUDA is basically a huge driver of NVIDIA's business. And AMD has not really supported their consumer side graphics as much as they needed to for the Rockham side things that would compete. And a developer or somebody that wants to get into, you know, looking at Rockham or, you know, CUDA for that matter, they have a GPU in their computer and they would like to use that. And if AMD can put effort into making that unified so that people can use that, I think that that's going to be better for the market. Now, in the article that Tom's Hardware did with this interview, I think some other things there were interesting in there with, you know, some of the fragmentation with the memory and just fragmentation in how it's harder to... Um, be able to stay on top of the Rockham and get things out to it. That, at least that's how I took away from reading the article. And AMD just needs to get better at that. And maybe the unified architecture here is going to help them. Yeah, you may have different memory subsystems. We see um, certain different things, even with the Zen side of things too, with IO dies being can be slightly different depending upon if you are in the server side or I should say Zen in general or in the consumer side, right? You have different things there that you need to support. And if AMD can kind of with a, do a chiplet approach and get the graphics side to be that modular as well, I think that they're on a pathway. And I actually think that RDNA being a chiplet in the 7900 XT and XTX was a pathway for them to realize that they could do the same approach and have a unified architecture that is a lot better for um, a lot a unified architecture that's a lot better for them to not just support you know Rockham but also support each market better now. You may not, we may not have the most optimal performance in every scenario, right? And that, we see that with Zen, Zen architecture too and Zen 5, right? They kind of focus on the enterprise, which is a lot more money. AI, there's a lot of money in that right now too. And AMD is able to do that, maybe bring some of that performance gains, maybe not be, be most optimal, but bring those performance gains down and put re put that money into the design phase of these products. So I see that there could be a huge benefit here, but AMD has to figure out how to take on CUDA, right? CUDA is a cornerstone in the industry and having an open source platform, I think is going to be better in the long run. At least I like it better, but also being able to support the consumer side GPUs so that anybody can just start running and working on it. I do hope that when AMD does this, they don't restrict things. They just, as they cut the GPUs and design them, they make them just full featured all the way through. And that I think is going to be another benefit because if somebody's starting to get into it and wants a little bit more compute power and Nvidia can be kind of cagey sometimes on certain things, this would be a huge benefit for those users and being able to get into a market where they otherwise, you know, people would be like, well, I guess I'm going to have to spend some extra money on an NVIDIA card and get that rather than just going with the AMD counterpart. So I think that there can be some benefits there because let's say you bought the GPU because it was a little bit better deal and it plays games just as well as the NVIDIA counterpart, but then you also get uh, performance of Rockham okay, let's start dabbling in this. Let's start uh, learning about it. Let's start using it. All of a sudden, AMD, you have another product out there that's using Rockham or potential of a product, and people are learning about that. And that's how you kind of break into an industry that has been 
um, controlled by NVIDIA here. So, I, you know, as much as I was wishy-washy before on, you know, hoping that the RDNA and CDNA splitting that would be able to pr provide market leaders in both, I think of some of AMD's resources of how they operate, right? They have leapfrog teams, teams on the Zen side, and that seems to be working pretty well. They seem to be having some stuff. I mean, the marketing side of things doesn't work too well for AMD right now, but just the design phase of it seems to be doing pretty well. Maybe what we can see here is that once this unified architecture gets together, we can start seeing that same incrementation. Is this going to... Um, be, you know, RDN5, I don't know. I would actually probably see this more of, you know, what, UDNA6 or 7 down the line. I don't know uh, to replace the CDNA or RDNA stuff. I think that's not going to be the next generation, but the generation after. And I could be wrong. Maybe they've already started down this line and have these designs pretty well um, going forward. Right, you have to think of the graphic side uh, of things, of the gaming side. Let's start there. You need to have ray tracing ready, and you need to have uh, you know all your rasterization up to par where AMD is currently, and you need to exceed that. Right, you need to beat that out because the next generation should be better. And if you can do that through like a chip to lit design, that's awesome. And I think that's where AMD is headed because if they can do that on both, you know, the MI series and then the um, Radeon series, that would be a huge benefit to them on being able to design things and split things up. You have a, then a, you know, a memory controller, or, you know, your GPU IO die basically. And you have that controlling things depending upon which memory subset and everything. That can be a specialized design to get all your memory controllers. And then you have, you know, your GPU side or your compute side chiplets. And you also have to think of what, what can it do in AI, right? There's certain thing that MI300 is very performant at. Well, that has to come in too. So you got the ray tracing side and you got that um, uh, other side of AI that needs to be done. And, you know, you could combine a GPU. That might not be the worst thing in the world to be able to get done because when you start thinking about it, what are the possibilities here? Maybe they have a, you know, Xilinx XDNA accelerator on them too that they, they can put in. I hope that this gets into CPUs and GPUs alike, this XDNA accelerators for AI, and that could be another benefit here of how to leverage things, especially if you have the CDNA uh, or Rockham in there as well to... Uh, to run the code on there and utilize the different levels of the AI platform, right? AI is not just a NPU accelerator, right? It's also using some of the GPU and CPU side. Intel has been pushing that of our total flops. If this is a whole thing that can be done, and if we can accomplish, or if AMD can accomplish that, and we can get that as a consumer. I think that there is an opportunity here for AMD to show some things off and say we can be very performant, right? You got to get power underneath control, right? That's always one thing. When you add a whole bunch of new stuff, you guys got to design and put power into there. We, we can't just keep pulling more and more out of a wall, right? There's certain limits. Um, you, you can only put, pull so much on a circuit, you know, unless we start all going to like bigger circuits here. Um, you know, we're on what, basically 110 here in the United States volts, so 15 amp circuits normally is ran in the house, but you know, we, we don't want to be pulling, you know, <laughs> you need a 2000 watt power supply. That's, uh, that's going to require some rewiring for some people. So, um, for these 110, 15 amps, uh, that are out there, but you know, we'll see what AMD is capable of doing and, um, I really hope that they can compete, right? I like to see more CUDA, Rockham competition. I really like to see just an open source side of things, not everything so closed off. But I think as developers, um, you, you know, you kind of got to use both currently today, or you should use both. I, NVIDIA is the safest bet, right? You're going to do that one first. But I think you should use both because let's say if you have it operating and AMD does have a better product or somebody's has a deal or wants to have that AMD product because it's cheaper for another aspect and you can take advantage of it, that might be a free sale for you, kind of like a free sale, right? 
you're already supporting the hardware. You don't have to put R&D expense into that because it's already been done and you get that little bit of benefit. So we'll see where this UDNA architecture takes place. Hopefully AMD, once they get the UDNA architecture down, they get everything combined, they start the same leapfrogging type um, design teams for this architecture because I'm guessing they're going to want to continue the yearly cadence for all their MI series. If that's the case, you could almost see a, a, almost yearly cadence then also for GPUs. That would be pretty cool. And if they can kind of get that leapfrogging, let's say it's a year to 18 months, let's say they get that leapfrogging done and we can start seeing a cadence like that. I think that is one way to put pressure on NVIDIA um, as well. So we'll see. Maybe Intel will come out with something. Maybe even Qualcomm will have some GPUs here or somebody else in the market, ARM, maybe ARM GPUs in general. We'll see. But let me know your thoughts on the UDNA changes that AMD is doing in the comments below. Let me know uh, if you have any, you know, dislike or like about this or you wish that they would have just stuck with the GCN type stuff that they were already doing before of their unified architecture there, right? This is kind of going, <laughs> I read someplace where it's kind of going back to GCN, right? Everything just a general compute architecture. So we'll see. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Grover Lona helped this channel grow. I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and watch another one of my videos as it really does help out the channel. Until next time, God bless.